want to talk to you about keeping your joy. I thought Michelle was going to preach my sermon this morning. She kept on talking about joy, and it's like, God, you must be talking to your kids. You must be telling us to keep our joy. Because so often we have opportunities to get upset. I'm raising my hand on that one. We have opportunities to be sad. We have opportunities to be frustrated. You know, when somebody's rude to us, whether it be at a grocery store, whether it be at church, or whether it be at the gas station, it causes us to get upset. With traffic on 93, you can't take a left. Have y'all noticed that? It makes you frustrated. Or being married to Mike Echterling, it makes you frustrated. And the reason is, is because in the last month, he's lost his keys five times. Okay, those are all things that cause us to have inconveniences in our life. It causes us to let things take us over. It can be a delay. It can be because people aren't doing us right and they got our hearts all hurt. But I have something to tell you this morning. You're probably not going to want to hear it. But those things are never going to stop happening. It's not going to go away. I'm sorry. You're not going to walk out of here going, oh, praise God. It's never going to stop happening. No, it's not. But I, for myself, I'm going to decide that I'm going to figure out how to handle what's being thrown at me. And that's what I want to share with you today. If you have your Bibles, turn to John 16, verse 22. This past week, I think I have quoted this scripture more than I have any other. John 16, 22. It simply says, let no man take your joy. Now, when I read that, I realize that it means that you and I are in control when it comes to our joy. It means that nothing can take our joy away. But what it does mean is that I can give my joy away. And I don't mean in a good way. It's that somebody hurts me, someone upsets me, and I give them something that I need to function. Again, Michelle quoted it this morning, the joy of the Lord is our strength. That's what gives us strength to do what we need to do. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. It's what we need to take every day so that our body remains healed. But I am telling you guys, no man can take our joy. And I'm not going to give mine up. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Amen. So the next time you have traffic on 93 that upsets you, that you want to just scream and holler at that person or even at your steering wheel... You need to ask yourself, is it worth giving up your joy for? Is it worth it? When somebody's rude to you on the phone, when somebody's rude to you at a grocery store, I have to decide, is it worth it to give up my joy? The answer is no. You know, and when we have delay in our plans, Maybe plans that we've looked at for quite some time and they're not working the way we think that they should work. Or someone has a negative comment to us, am I going to allow that to sour my day or I am I going to give them my joy? The answer is no. The other day, Mike and I had a little breakfast date and everyone around us was angry. Everybody. And I even told Mike, I said, do you hear what's going on? You know, shh, shh, did you hear that? Shh, shh, shh. Everyone was mad that was around us as they were eating breakfast. And I told Mike, I said, you know the reason they're angry? It's because they've given their joy away so much they can't find it anymore. Guys, we cannot let anything take our joy. Now, some more information that I'm sure you have figured out is I can't control what a person does. I can't control what a person says, but I can control how I respond. That's the part that holds on to my joy. So what I'm telling you is not simple. What I'm telling you is not easy. I'm telling you like a mama telling her kids, quit giving away your joy. 
Don't give it away. We need that strength. We need that medicine. Quit letting people upset you over stuff that, as my mama would have told me, it doesn't make a hill of beans. Quit. Quit letting the traffic, quit letting the delays, quit letting things frustrate you. Because what I'm trying to tell you this morning is we have to quit giving away our joy. Several months ago, I actually taught a sermon on choose to be happy. Do y'all remember that one? Say yes, you did. It impacted you. Yes. Choose to be happy. And one of the things that I said is we need to remind ourselves that the favor of God surrounds us. The blessings of God surrounds us. His anointing surrounds us. And so when people come, and I'm sure I'm not the only one in this room that's ever had someone try to push you down, that's tried to discredit you, our job is to not to pay attention to it. Because I don't want anything or anyone to keep me from the destiny that God has put in my heart. And so if I stay focused on Jesus... If I stay focused on the cross, then whatever is said or done to me, it won't matter. You know, sometimes I say, mostly it's in joking, I'm so glad I'm an only child. I'm so glad. I don't have to deal with siblings. I don't have to deal with anything. It's just easy. And that's really not necessarily the truth because I know some of you have the most wonderful families. But the counseling sessions that I am seeing myself do lately is all because of family. And so I found this quote from someone, you have to be my age or older. His name was George Burns. Do y'all remember him? He said, and I'm quoting, happiness is having a loving, caring, close-knit family living in another city. I had to laugh. I was like, yeah, that's what family works like. But you know, the problem is, is sometimes those people that we do love, that we call our family, do not want us to prosper. They don't want what God has put inside of us to increase and to be able to be seen by others. But you know, family can live in another city. Family you may not have to deal with, but when you're dealing with coworkers, You probably see them more than you see your family. And sometimes co-workers are not going to celebrate you. They're not going to celebrate the calling that's in your life. They're going to try to push you down. They're going to try to discredit you because they don't want you to be happy because they're not happy. And I'm also telling you, you have friends Friends that you love and that you've called them in your life for years and years, and all of a sudden you find out they've not been loyal. Those are things that hurt us. It causes us to respond. But our job is not to get upset. Our job is not to give away our joy. Our job is to keep our eyes on the king, that we cannot give up what Jesus has given to us. Now, I know it's hard to believe, but I can't change your mind about who I am and what God has called me to be. And that same thing holds true for you. My job for the kingdom is to run the race. My job is to see what he's called me to do, not only run it, but finish it. That's why we've been born for such a time as this, is so that you and I can run and finish the race that you and I can be who God has called us to be. And I can't be worried about critics. I can't be worried about naysayers. I've got to keep my eye on the king because I know that if I do that, God will take care of me. If you have your Bibles, again, turn to Nehemiah chapter 4. Now, this is mostly going to be homework, but I want to share with you a story out of this Nehemiah chapter 4. Nehemiah was called by God to go rebuild the wall in Jerusalem. Well, nobody wanted to help him. Nobody wanted in any way to assist in this program. So what does God do? He calls an ungodly king. 
And he tells that guy, you support him. You give him provision to get this wall built. He wasn't in any way godly. But I have found throughout my life, and I'm sure you've seen it as well, that God will always give provision for the vision. He just will. That's what he loves to do. And we see that this king has given Nehemiah the provision to rebuild the wall. But not everybody is excited about what he's doing. They think Nehemiah is a nut. So what these two people do, they stand at the very bottom of the mountain and they scream up to Nehemiah while they're rebuilding the wall because they want Nehemiah to quit. They want Nehemiah to be baited and all of a sudden have conflict and be upset and frustrated. So what did Nehemiah do? He did what I'm telling you we need to do. He said, no, I'm not giving you my joy. I'm not going to be upset. You're not going to cause me to stop doing what God has called me to do. I'm going to fulfill what God has put in my life. I'm going to stay focused on what the destiny that God is that he's put in my life. Now, Nehemiah could have done what I think I would have done. Climbed down off that little wall, taken those people, pointed my finger in their face and said, Stop. Quit picking on me. Quit being ugly. That's the way an only child talks. So he would have possibly gone down and straightened them out, but you know that's not what he did. He just kept himself on the project. He kept himself on the wall. And if he would have come down like I would and maybe even you, he wouldn't have finished the wall in time. There is the possibility he wouldn't have ever completed the wall or he wouldn't have done it in the time that God specified. So I'm telling you, when you're dealing with coworkers, when you're dealing with family, you don't have to have their approval to fulfill what God has been put in your life. That's not easy. It's not easy when your family tells you you're a fruit loop. I understand. But I'm also telling you, if you want to be that God has given you a plan and you're going to fulfill it, you can't take the bait. You can't get riled up. You can't let other people control your joy. Let no man control your joy. If you have your Bibles again, Matthew 5, 5. It's a scripture that that I was taught a lot in school, a lot in the church. It said, blessed, happy, fortunate to be envied are those that are meek, for they will inherit the earth. Now, I was taught meek meant weak. We were taught in church to be weak. We were taught that that's what Jesus was. He was meek and he was weak. But I'm telling you, meek does not mean weak. Meekness means strength under control. And that's how you and I have to walk every day because the purposes that God has given us, we have to have strength under control. I have to ignore the comments that people say. I don't have to pay attention to what their opinion is. It's because my eye is on Christ. Christ is already, he's ordained me. He's commissioned me. And he's done the same thing with you. And we don't need to be weak. We need to have strength under control. It also means we take the high road. It means that they can take that low muddy road. I'm going to go the highway. Because I know that God's going to take care of my adversaries. I know that God can defend me better than I can ever defend myself. That's That's who he is. And each one of you were born for this day. Each one of you have a call and a destiny for this hour. All you have to do is look out in this world and you go, my goodness, they need Jesus. And it comes from you. Because sometimes you're the only Jesus they're ever going to see. Turn to 2 Kings chapter 2. 2 Kings chapter 2 verses 23 through 24. We're talking about Elisha. Not Elijah. Elisha. Elijah went to be with God 
He threw his anointing and his cloak, and Elisha got it, and he got a double portion anointing. So here we are. Elisha has left Jericho, and he's going to Bethel. Man, I know I love going to Bethel. That's in Reading. I know, gosh, that's a lot of places that a lot of people have gone to. But here he is. Elisha's left Jericho, went up to Bethel. And as Elisha was walking along the road, a group of boys from the town began mocking and making fun of him. Go away, Baldy, they chanted. Go away, Baldy. Elisha turned around, looked at them, called down a curse on them and in the name of the Lord. Then two bears came out of the woods and they mauled 42 of the boys. Now I bet a lot of you didn't even know that was in the Bible. The Bible is the most interesting book you could ever read. Not only will it change your life, but it will make you chuckle. Because Elisha didn't get upset. You say, oh no, he called down a curse. No, he just said, God, go take care of it. God, you take care of this situation. You hear what they're trying to do. They're trying to bait me. They're trying to distract me. They're trying to get me off the road that I'm supposed to be on. And he was determined he was not going to let these boys take his joy. So Elisha stayed focused. Just like you and I need to do in what God has called us to do. Now, there's two things that I want you to get from this Bible story. Number one, don't make fun of bald people. Did I say that right, Mike? You said that was the point I had to make. So you can't make fun of bald people. See, it's a good thing. Number two, you don't have to straighten people out. God will take care of you. God is your vindicator. God is the one who will take care of opposition that comes in our life. He knows what they're doing. He knows what they're saying. Even if you don't, he does. And he sees the disrespect. But you and I, we have to stay in peace. Because who's our Prince of Peace? Jesus himself. And when we stay in peace, we stay in joy. He gives us the strength. He gives us the ability to know that God's going to fight our battle. And with this story and what I have seen in my life, I assure you, God does better than I could ever do when it comes to rectifying situations. Psalms 94, 13 is another scripture that I found, and I absolutely love it. Because I have to be reminded... It says, you help me stay calm when troubles come. You help me until the wicked are put in their graves. Now, this scripture does not tell us, you know what? They're never going to bother you. They're never going to say anything ugly about you. That opposition, they won't say anything that's going to hurt your heart. No, this scripture tells me, yes, they will. You're going to have opposition. You're going to have opportunities to get upset with what people say and do to you. But you know what? God has given us the power to stay calm. God has given us the power not to give them the joy which is our strength. This week was a challenging week, and like I said, I preached this sermon to myself more than any other time because it wasn't to teach you, it was to teach me. Our phones all broke this week. They all decided to stop. So three times I had to go from here to Missoula to get my phone fixed. Well, as you guys know, they're not always the nicest people in those stores. And the one that I got was snippy. And she wanted to tell me off. She wanted to tick me off. And she wanted to do everything she could to get under my skin. And I told Mike, I said, I want to go set her straight. Mike said, no, just be nice. I'll go handle it. And I was like, oh, dear Lord, no. You know, you can't do that. But I'm telling you, it was difficult. And on the third day, thank you, Jesus, she absolutely changed her tune, and she gave me double for my trouble, something that Jesus will always do for you. And so as I'm leaving the store, I looked at Mike and I said, 
there's a cookie store next door. I'm going to go get her a cookie. Because you know, guys, my love language is food. I just, well, you can't tell, but I love to love people with food. So I went into this really exclusive cookie store, went and bought her a cookie, went in, and she was screaming at somebody else at that time. <laughs> and so I went over to her, and she noticed the box. And I said, I want to give you this. And I want to thank you for how you helped me this week. And she burst into tears. And she looked at me, and I'm going to try to say this without crying. She looked at me. She said, you know what people need? And I was like, what, cookies? I don't know. <laughs> She said, people need Jesus. And she said, that's who you gave me this week. And she said, thank you for giving me something that I need. I started crying with her. I gave her a big hug. What I wanted to do was tell her, I can't help it. I want to slap you. <laughs> Now you're nice to me. I'd have got you a cookie the first day if I had known. I wanted to give her a piece of my mind, but I remembered when my mama would tell me all the time, you don't have any to spare. Don't give them a piece of your mind. My dad would add, give them a piece of your spirit, the spirit of the living God. So we have to stop using the excuse, I just can't help it. They did it to me. What was that Flip Wilson thing? The devil made me do it? See, I'm making you guys feel really old today. But I'm telling you that you and I have the power to stay calm. We have been given the ability to have strength under control. And we also have been given, because of Jesus and what he did on the cross, a renewed mind. I know that I was praying every time I was waiting on her to holler at me. I would say, Father, thank you for renewing my mind. Thank you, Father, for giving me a spirit of love and self-control. And then I would look at Mike and say, say the same thing. <laughs> because you get upset. You let your flesh take control. And it's because, guys, we're looking at a world right now that loves to dump things on us. They want to dump their frustration. They want to dump their criticism. They want to dump their, their bitterness. And again, I can't help people dumping, but I can control how it affects me. Don't give up your joy. Don't give up your joy. Why? Because your destiny is so great. You were born for now. I've said it over and over when I've been behind this pulpit. I would have loved to have been born during Doris Day days and sung all her songs and been in the movies and all those other things. But God said, no, that's not who you are. And God saw in you why you need to be here. You need to let what's being said and done to you bounce off. Because, guys, the time is too precious. We have too much that we've been called to do to be weighted down by somebody else's garbage and our garbage as well. James 4.14 says, You really don't know about tomorrow. What is life? You are a mist that appears for only a short while before it vanishes. What are we saying? You're here for a moment, and then you're gone. What did I say on the sermon that I preached? You, you choose to be happy? You and I need to put our foot down every day and say, Father, this is the day that you've made for me, and I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. No matter 93 is horrid, no matter all the other things are going on, Father, I'm going to rejoice in you. I'm not going to be defeated. I'm not going to be depressed. I've made up my mind. I've made up my heart. I am going to enjoy this day. I've also thought about how in Genesis 5, we see where God created men and women. And he breathed into them the breath of life. 
He breathed into you the breath of life. Yes. And I assure you, he doesn't want your breath to come out and be destructive, frustrated, and bitter. He breathed into you so that you can give life to others, that you can give love to others. And even more than that, you can give life to yourself because you're not giving away your strength, you're not giving away your health, and you're honoring God, and you're saying, Father, I'm going to have a good attitude today. I'm going to bless you because you've blessed me. Turn to Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17. This scripture is what I have quoted to Mike all the times that we were going back and forth from here to Missoula. Habakkuk 3, 17 says, Though the fig tree does not blossom, and there be no food on the vine, Though my olive crops fail and my fields produce no food, though there be no sheep in the pen, though there's no cattle in the stalls. Now I'm going to pause there before we read the rest. That sounds like ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox News, and CNN. They're telling you, you're not going to have Christmas this year. You're not going to have any gasoline to put in your car. Your taxes are going sky high. And all of it is for us to get our eyes off what God has done. And so on verse 17 at the very end, Habakkuk says, after saying the absolute what he was seeing in the natural, he was said, yet I rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in the God of my salvation. Guys, there's reasons to be discouraged. Watch the news and they'll give you a list. But I'm telling you, I'm going to rejoice in God, my salvation. Look what he's done. He's given me life and life more abundantly. He's healed my body over 2,000 years ago. He provides for me and I don't even have to worry about it. My salvation has been given to me. Healing is already mine. Victory is already mine. Increase is already mine. But what do I have to do? I just need to rejoice in Him. I need to keep my joy. Even when sometimes I want to stomp on it and cry and throw a temper tantrum. I'm going to do what Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 17 says. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. It's a decision you and I have to make, especially in where we're living right now. I'm going to be joyful in Jesus. And when we do that, guys, we're going to see that we will enjoy our life more. We'll see that we're free from frustrations. We're free from bitterness. We're free from anger. And we're going to rise higher. Like I said, it's not only the high road, but he says that we will mount up with wings like eagles. It's because we're not weighted down. I'm not weighted down by my stuff, and I love you, but I'm not weighted down by your stuff either. I'm going to pray. I'm going to seek God. But I will tell you, there's times that I go home, and I'm just being honest. I'm being real, and I cry. And it's not because I'm worried. It's because my heart, God, What do I do? What do I say? But you know what I'm learning? I can be happier. I can fulfill the destiny that God has put in my life if I keep my eyes on Him. And I'm telling you guys, you can as well. We have to choose not to give up our joy. We have to choose to say, I will rejoice in Him. And we may not see what we want to see. There's been a delay, but that doesn't mean that God isn't making a way where there seems to be no way. Guys, we live in a time that most people, I'm sure Paul would love to say, man, I want to go in there and see what's going to happen now. I'm sure Peter would have already made several comments and he would want to know what's going on. But I'm telling you, this is the time. This is the latter rain. And we're walking into one of the greatest times the world has ever seen. And for whatever reason, God chose you and he chose me to be here. 
But he wants us to hold on to our joy. He wants us to hold on to him. And when we do, we will fulfill the destiny that he's put into our life. This morning, I don't know where you are. Maybe you're where we were this week, just upset, frustrated. Things were not working. We would go home. Mike wouldn't cry, but I'd sit there and just sob. Mike, I don't know what to do. But I'm here today to tell you, no matter what you're dealing with, he wants to meet you today. He wants to restore your joy. He wants to give you joy overflowing. He wants to give you what he laid his life down for. I love the example that Michelle said today. I had never heard that before. He wore the crown of thorns so that we could have the crown of joy. I was like, man, I'm going to steal that. Guys, it's time for us to take off the crown of thorns and put on his crown of righteousness and joy. So no matter what you're looking at, I want you to know I have the answer. His name is Jesus. It's not a three point and a poem. It's not if you add one and one, you get three. I'm telling you, Jesus will make a way. So bow your heads and close your eyes this morning. I want you to know that Jesus loves you. He knows what you're dealing with. He knows the hurt and the pain that has come against you. And just like we saw with Nehemiah, just like we saw with Elisha, he will make a way. He'll take care of the adversary. He'll take care of the enemy. Whether the enemy is actually a name that you know or if it's just the devil. They've been defeated in Jesus' name. So today, if you're saying, I I just feel weary, I need to have an injection of his joy, this is the hospital to come to. This one doesn't cost anything. It's already been bought and paid for by his blood. So, Denise, I I just desire to have prayer. Nobody's going to look around to say, I desire to have prayer. I want my joy restored. I want my joy to be full. Yes, yes. I want my joy to be full. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Maybe you say, Denise, I just need Jesus. (laughs) I just need Him. He is the only way. He is the only truth. He is the only life. If that's you, just raise your hand right where you are and say, I just want Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, Father, you've seen these hands. You've seen these hearts. First of all, Father, we want you. We don't want anything else. We don't want a policy and a plan. We just want the King to come and be in our midst. Father, you've told us that you've given us a divine exchange, that you will take our sickness and give us health, that you will take our depression and give us joy that you'll take our lack and give us more than enough. God, what we want is just you, your arms wrapped around us so that we can fulfill what you've called us to do. Father, we thank you that today we're going to laugh, maybe for the first time in quite some time. And it's a joy that we have because you're in our midst. God, we thank you. We thank you, Father, that even though family and friends and situations come against us, Father, you'll never leave us, you'll never forsake us, you'll never turn your back on us. And because of that, Father, we will run the race and complete it. So, Father, you've seen these hands touch their lives. God, give them a wonderful laughing fit today. That, God, all they can do is just giggle because they feel joy welling up in their souls. Thank you for that. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Family, thank you for watching today's online church service. We know that it impacted you and blessed you greatly. Be sure to connect with us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. And find out what we're doing right here in the Bitterroot Valley at h2hm.org. 
Also, we have four ways to give, and they're listed below. We appreciate you partnering with us. We love you guys very much, and until next time, God bless.